come down and bringing hordes uh, of foreigners that come and destroy his property, kill his children. You see physical affliction in the form of sickness, boils, that sort of deal. You literally see the devil being behind it. And in all of those things, there was, uh, in fact, it says, in all of those things, Job held his integrity. And I want to tell you that if your enemy is the devil, you're going to have more strength to stand against him than against your friends. You will even gain a uh, fortitude because you're a Christian. You'll stand against that devil. You'll stand against it. You'll fight. You'll kick, you'll do whatever, man, you will, you know, you'll do whatever you have to do to stand with God. Job's no different than us in that sense. He was able to speak uh, good words, pure words, strong words, words of faith, words of integrity. And then God sent the worst thing, the most horrible <coughs> trial he ever could. Peers, <laughs> friends, men of integrity, <laughs> men of renown with whom he was well acquainted, well known, But we find from the words, once they come, and most of the book of Job is about their words. And what I did in, in my book on that was in one chapter I summarized every one of their speeches, basically. I summarized what their point was, and their angle that they came at him and everything. And you know, just a side note, it's, it's always a good idea to know what the Bible says. You know, and, and yes, it's great for me to write it all down for you to read it and all this, you know, uh, Zophor speech, and of course that sounds like some new modern day medicine that <laughs> make your eyes bleed and everything, but which is not sneeze. But nonetheless, <laughs> uh, these guys come and uh, well, just to finish my point, and that is, it's good to, for you to search the scriptures and really, because it really makes a difference. You can have somebody read this to you, and you can kind of nod, and you can acknowledge the words, but there's nothing like getting into the scripture and saying, what, what, what is this guy saying? And not only did I search out what this guy and this guy and this guy was saying, because there were three friends, but each round, they, they, each time they went around, they took turns going around, uh, each round, they emphasized something different. And my thought when I was searching that out is, what is the significance of these words of them to Job? What is the significance in terms of trial? With the thought, because I wrote this many, 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 many years ago, with the thought, that I will one day face these things, and it would be nice to kind of have, you know, some understanding of what this is, what's going on, instead of just blindly walking into a storm. Mm -hmm. It was clear to me when I first began to write on Job that the, these, these friends, these men of integrity and their words, and the impact of their words upon him would be much more severe it wasn't the devil just standing against the devil. All of a sudden, it's somebody that you trust. Right. Jesus came unto so his own. Very telling words. His own. Mm -hmm. Very telling words. His own. Not just people who do it. Not just friends. His own really speaks of something.
breath. And you begin to uh, see the uncomfortableness of the situation. You begin to see the embarrassment of the situation. You begin to see the, uh, the reaction. And Job did react. I mean, he didn't react over the devil. He didn't, you know, you know naked I came into the world and naked we leave. Blessed be the Lord giveth the Lord. Naked the way, blessed be the Lord. And all that's really great. And that's, that's really great under one banner, the enemy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when your friends have become the enemy, yeah. when people that you admire mm -hmm. become the enemy, and let's not even say the end. Because that still could give us something. They are attacking us. When people you admire attack, when people you trust say things that hurt you. Yeah, that's right. Is that not incredibly hard to deal with? Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? There are wounds mm -hmm. within that are difficult to get over. Whereas with the enemy, you might actually be given an extra strength to press forward in the battle. When it's your friends or whatever, it, it wounds you, it takes you down, it takes you to your knees where you, you find it hard to fight. You find it hard to go on. You do. And what that does is it causes a questioning of yourself. Now, when you're fighting the devil, <laughs> you, you don't really have much question. He's the bad guy. I'm the good guy. That's kind of our view of that. You know, the Lord is the good guy. But nonetheless, there is the strength of knowing you're on the right side. I mean, I mean there is. There's a strength of knowing you're on the right side. But this sort of trial brings up, that's, that's the reason for the name of the chapter that I wrote, The Inward Affliction of Job. These trials bring up things, doubtings about yourself. Trying to second guess yourself. Wondering about your own motives. Uh, questioning you. What does that do? Well, the enemy was out here standing there like a Goliath, and you were ready to take him. But then when we get to question ourselves, we open the door for the enemy. We open the door for the carnal mind to begin to eat on us. Not, not like swing a sword and kill us like Goliath would outwardly, but an inward erosion that begins to slowly take all strength and ability away. And... Truth is that Job, even though he was the most righteous one of the of those three, Job's view wasn't wasn't correct because Job's view was not uh, he. Let's put it this way: because Job had a view, a um, oh gosh, what was, there were some good words. Job had a a, this is a, 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 a perspective that included a plan, a, a, an understanding of God, and a plan on how to proceed. But Job had not yet seen the Lord. And I'm telling you, a right plan, a God-given plan, is no replacement for seeing Jesus. Amen. And then change into that sense. So seeing Jesus and understanding not just the words, but the spirit of the word. Because let's face it, there have been Pharisees that have killed people or whatever, you know, in the name of the words. But that's not the spirit of what Jesus. You know, remember the, the, the disciples, predict Pharisees, the closest disciples Jesus had, you know. Lord, they they don't they're not gonna let you come. You know, here and everything, should we go over there and rain fire? Or should we ask the little father to rain fire down on them? You know, I mean, after all, they're against you. They're, they're, they're uh, not standing up for what's right. They're, you know, and Jesus said, you don't even know what spirit you're of. That is key when Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you're of. 
Is it a question that they're, that they're not of that spirit? If you don't know what spirit you're of. Is that good? Is that please any of you to know that this is the spirit that you are of, but you don't know the spirit that you're of. It's not a spirit that you want to be of. And anytime you see yourself fall short of the spirit of the Lamb, anytime you see yourself fall short, it's not because you're not of that spirit. Right. Because you don't know that spirit. You're of it. But you don't know what spirit you're of. And so the plan, the thought, the way, the, the layout, the understanding, the security that we draw from the, all of that, the plan, the thought, the layout, the, the, the plan, how it's going to be executed, my part in that plan, all of that, folks, really, in, in a sense, is no different than a guy who goes to work at General Motors. And he knows the boundaries, and he knows the rules, and he knows when he can take a break, and he knows when he doesn't. And do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, you say, yeah, but it's better because it's of God. But it's still just a plan. I mean, somebody could have, you know, if somebody handed a new Bible school student a little brochure and said, read this and you'll understand everything, well, that would not be right. <laughs> you know? Because there's no way that you can write down. The truth is, in many of the, the books, just explaining the rules, I try to put the spirit of the thing in there, and it doesn't translate. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have tried. And I've still heard people legalistically approach rules and stuff like that. I just go, that is not my heart. That's not what I meant. But you think that grieved the Lord? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, so people approaching the law based on works and their own understanding. And so there is the necessity of really seeing the Lord. Now these three guys didn't. And they didn't go down in the, in the Word of God as great men of God. They went down as people that ended up in the crunch, not because they were evil, but because they thought they were right. But when you see Jesus, you will know that you're not right. Amen. But the good news is you'll know that he's right. But even better news is you'll know that you're being conformed to that same image. <laughs> and that's your hope. You. you know. Amen. But it requires that we see Jesus. Because if we don't really see Jesus, if we come, if we come to a revelation of Christ without seeing Jesus, then we're, we're already deceived. Do you understand what I meant by that? If you say you've come to a revelation of Christ without ever, ever seeing Jesus, how will you press on to see Jesus? You know what I'm saying? I mean, and let's face it. You know, doesn't the scripture say, knowing this, that the old man is crucified? Well, I know that. I heard that when I was, you know what I mean? Well, good. But I-N-G means knowing. <laughs> knowing. Not just having known, and I'm working it, baby. I'm working. <laughs> it's not about working. It's about knowing, and that knowing process works. The situation of Job and these, these men, uh, and, and, and it might be a little more difficult for women to understand this, but men have a real deal among them. You know, they, they like to, you know, look good and be cool and whatever. And if they don't, that kind of hurts their feet, you know. And well, Joe was considered the top dude. <laughs> the most spiritual. Okay. And to look bad in front of these three guys, you can't even imagine the hurt. And the problem is, is that there's a competitive thing, particularly in men, but certainly everywhere, but, but that's, that when it finds the top guy has failed, it really wants to jump on it. Not just regular, but as we say in the movies of Texas, with the gusto of the helmet. <laughs> 
<laughs> and to really take advantage of this, you know. There's a, you know, I've heard it said, I believe that when a man's down kicking before he has a chance to rise up. <laughs> you know. This is the only opportunity. And these men jumped on that opportunity to because there is this thought of, um, you know, you, you step on people to push yourself forward. And I've always tried to teach you, the best place to be is down at the bottom. Mm -hmm. It's the best place for pushing people up. Amen. And it really is. And it really is. Mm -hmm. But you have to have the spirit of that. That's you know, right. it's, just a, it's a good saying. I mean, we all have to say, well, that's, that's, that is good. <laughs> It's <laughs> not working. That's, you know, we know that saying. And when we get in that situation, we'll start biting other people's legs. What are you doing? You know? You know? And that's the truth. And so, um, this, this understanding that Job had going into this situation was if I do good, if I put God first, now listen carefully because I want you to see if this matches up <laughs> with your understanding. If I do good, if I put God first, if I give myself to Him and try hard, then the result of that should be that God is going to take care of me. Now, how He takes care of us that starts being defined the word of each person's mind. Right. <laughs> yeah. Somebody might somebody might get things, somebody might get a husband or wife, somebody might get, you know, protection at all times so that they never really have to go through any real major trials. You know, I mean a few little sprinkles just you know, <laughs> prove that you're, you know, a Christian and oh. So I'm with the whole, you know, no, no devastating thing. None of that stuff. After all, and this is really kind of what Job said, after all, this is why I serve God. Mm -hmm. This is why I was good. What's the point of living? What is the point of doing good? What is the point of me praying over my kids after every deal and, 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 Pouring all this into my kids and doing all of this, if if it's going to end in all of this destruction and loss and everything, what is the what is the point? And you know, I think that's a good question. What is the point? Amen. What is the point? And we have to answer what is the real point. Now, again, I believe that some of us may have. Uh, what did I call those guys? Amateur philosophers. Yeah. <laughs> I believe all of us may have a uh, amateur philosophy mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. life. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that, that that philosophy actually guides us more than the comprehension of God's purpose. It did with Job. I mean, it took him out, it took his legs out from him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it devastated yeah. him. And then these friends start picking on him. And you're thinking, um, you know, and Joe kind of more or less said this, folks. I'm, I mean, he said it to these guys. I'm more spiritual than you. You know, you guys, you know, you never, you know, da da da, all this. And I even mentioned that Job kind of goes through a phase of self-pity. You know, where you're going, you know, God, I've done all of this and da da da. And then you look at the guy, and like, don't you, don't you remember when you were down and out? And it's this stuff like that. Don't you remember when you were down and out? And I was there for you, and I was there for the poor, and I, where were you guys? Because every one of those things comes up. When the, when the trial, uh, let, let me put it on a modern level, 
when God puts you in fear factor, <laughs> He's going to have exactly what you need. Prepared, and, it, and I'm not talking about rats and roaches. <laughs> I'm talking about the trial that will bring, you know, uh, well, let's put it this way. The trial that will bring, that will prove that Adam really never died. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not an yeah. That's what it is. That's what it is. And it is uncontrollable. It, the trial that will bring him up so strong, so fast, and with such force that you are helpless to hold him back. And all of your fears of being seen, having him live again, are not strong enough to hold him back. He's upset. <laughs> and you can, he, but he's dragging you yeah. as he comes forward. <laughs> oh my God, no, no. You know. Paul, when he saw that happen in him, he said, Oh, Richard. <laughs> ah! But there is this chemistry, folks. I mean, there's one thing for you to sit in your little room somewhere and see him come up within your mind and go, blah, 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 and somebody walk by and go, <laughs> Do 
you reek on the inside. Yeah? Well, that was Jesus' son. He's a lot nicer than me. Or is it? <laughs> you know, maybe he just tells it like it is. And that is what we are like. And we gauge ourselves, now listen carefully, we gauge ourselves based on how much we manifest, not how much is in us. So we think we're doing better than what we are because there's at least three people that are not dead today. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> And we go, wow. You know, now we still have murder in our heart. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and Jesus said, yeah, you yeah, know, got murder in your heart, and it's, it's good as it did. Well, no, I didn't do it. You know. Well, he has to bring it all up. He has to. He has to. Because if he doesn't, what will happen? We will continue in a wrong way. Do you agree? We will continue in a wrong way. We will continue to delude ourselves about ourselves based on the measure that we manifest instead of the measure that is within us. And so he's got to bring us not just down based on our circumstances, but he's got to get those, whatever that is, in our face. So that we're just, you know, have you, you know, being a pastor, I've gotten to sit in counseling with a lot of people. I've heard people talk, and it didn't sound like talk at all. It sounded like they were vomiting on me. I bet you that too. It's a lot. I mean, there's no conversation going on here. They're getting it out. It's like they, they, they've been needing to throw up for a long time, and you get to be the one. You know what I mean? <gasps> That's our soul, and that's our carnal mind, 
one sense, all of that isn't going to survive. That's right. You're going to see Jesus, Praise and you God. will be different, and the, and the pain and all of that is not going to be there like it has been in the past. Amen. And if you go round and round on this, and you've touched the same area three times uh, in your lifetime, and you dread it every time, I would suggest that you say to the Lord, this time I want to go all the way. Yes. I'm yes. tired of going around and then kind of, kind of offering. You know, do you understand yes. kind of giving up a yes. little bit or offering or something? No more. I'm, I'm going in. Yes. yes. Because I'm going to tell you that the pain isn't that much more deep. It's not. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's not that much more deep from what you've already suffered. Mm -hmm. And in fact, in some ways, it's more suffering because you back off right. and your soul is so in the forefront. Yeah. It's just right. like, it's just horrible. I mean, it's like, it is like torture. Literally, it is like a horrible torturer putting you through this. And all of us would want to run, except when your heart settles down and you want to see Jesus, the heart turns to the Lord and you say, Father, don't let me out of this. Amen. And I've told this story long years ago. Most of you don't know this, but there's probably a few. Way, way back when movies first started coming out, one of the first scary movies that came out was called The Werewolf. Anybody ever see that old, yeah. old movie? I think it was Lon Chaney. And this dude gets bit by a werewolf. And so he's just like, you know, at night when the full moon comes out, I mean, turn all, you know, his hair grows and shows the, the transformation and everything out to you. He goes out there and ah, he kills people, and, you know, I guess he sucks their blood or whatever, he got blood on him, you know, he wakes up in the morning, you know, clothes are all ripped off, you know, he's got blood on him. Dude, that was a rough night last night, you know, until he realizes that he what he is. And so finally he tells some friends and he says, you know, I'm going in this room and whatever you do, he doesn't tell them the full story, but he says, whatever you do, no matter what you hear, don't open this door. You know, because I'm going to be going nuts, baby. And it's going to sound horrible, don't open the door. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, what you got to love is that people always go, well, I guess he needs me. <laughs> 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 you more or less say to the Lord, no matter how much I scream and cry, no matter how big the fit, I, no matter how much I say, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I didn't mean it, I want it out. <laughs> Don't open that door, Lord. Don't let me out there. Look, just, don't do it. I don't want to go through this anymore. I want to get to the victory. I want to get in Christ. I want to live from that place. Lord, please bring me into this. And, and he will. And there is no way to describe to you. There is no way to describe to you all of the elements that come together at that time that are exactly what you need, that are so, it, it's, it's uh, like the scripture that talks about the great and terrible day of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> it's Amen. great and it's terrible. <laughs> All at the same time. <laughs> Yeah. When the Lord appears, that's what it's talking about. When the Lord appears, that great and terrible day of the Lord, who shall stand? None of us. Thank God. Huh? Not in the fulfillment, not in the manifestation at the revelation of Christ. None of us shall stand. But it is great because then we're not living by our own life and therefore our own motivations and therefore our own. Hurt feelings. Do you know what I'm talking about? Our own ways of reacting that we cannot ultimately control. You know what I mean? I mean, behavior modification is not the answer. Christ 
Christ is the answer. Yes. Yes. And Christ has his own behaviors. Yes. I don't think. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? And he's not bound by what happened to you when you were a kid or what happened to you, you know. He's not bound by those things. Yeah. And uh, there's more good news. He's not only not bound by those things, but he doesn't have all the emotional, you know, it talks about the sting of death. He doesn't have the sting of the, the emotional tie with those things. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, he doesn't react with all. He does, I mean, even if he doesn't react because it's not in nature, he also doesn't have that deep wounding thing so that eventually, now this is, this is and I'm going to try to close with this, but this is, this is an amazing thing. Because all of the things that you used to react to that are, that are not just your reactions, they're actually you, <laughs> deep down. Your hurts, it's who you become. <laughs> you become literally free of that. <laughs> it's not opening doors for the carnal mind or the devil or the soul or anything else. There is a stability that is the Lord. Yeah. Now, I believe that we walk a thin line between risen with Christ and on the other side of the cross. Mm -hmm. Where we can go off into that if we want to. So you have to really be with the Lord when I say we're going to be with the Lord. I'm going to continue in the Lord. I'm going to continue in what that revelation of Christ has mm -hmm. brought and bought. Mm -hmm. And if you do, you don't have that, all that prickly, hurting, tender stuff going on. Mm -hmm. You have the Lord. Mm -hmm. You have the Lord's reaction. And you have the lack of ramming or your life from before so that when you're in the same situation you'd be in before, you're just, it's just like, Normal. Yeah. Now, I call that freedom, but that freedom is only Christ. Mm -hmm. And that freedom only comes by the revelation of Christ. Mm -hmm. So God is looking at Job. And folks, Job was head and shoulders above these other guys spiritually. Amen? Then why isn't God working on these three guys? You know what I'm saying? I mean, God, they're more messed up than I am. They're more messed up than me. Anybody hear anything? Maybe uh, they're not. But, <laughs> but even if they are, even if they are, here is your problem. You said you wanted to be a son. That's right. Yeah. You prayed. You should have prayed. You, you said, I want to be conformed to the image of Christ. That's right. That's not God's fault. That's right. That's your fault. Yeah. Yeah. So if he's going to pick on somebody, he's going to pick on you. Because when he called for volunteers, your hand went up. Yeah. And that's the truth. That's the truth. Yeah. These guys have no interest in coming deeper into the Lord. These guys have no interest in, in, in an exchange life. They are steadfast in their theology and their belief systems. Yeah. If you are not, that's right. Thank you. you can be dealt with. That's right. Or he wouldn't waste his time. That's right. Because he's not in the torture. Amen. Yeah. He does not. That's good. He does not. And he won't do it. That's the truth. So if you're not going to torture, but folks, it is torture if every time you get to the promised land, you back off and start running the other direction. Because it's just, it's a, it's a, you know, it's kind of like a thing that you don't want to do, and as long as you keep putting it off, it only becomes worse, your stomach becomes more tight as you face the thought of doing it every time, every going up. You know, the best thing to do is, you know, just, Rear back and jump in. Mm -hmm. That's the picture I had when I was first born again. You walk up to that water and go, oh, what's cold, what's cold, oh. Try to get your foot in there, oh. You know, another foot, oh. Or just get back and run and jump in, and it all gets over with a whole lot faster than, you know. Because you, you 
finally get up to a certain level and go, I can't do this, I can't do it. I'm out of here. Hmm? Ah, well, I guess we need to pray. <laughs> <laughs>